What's going on everybody? Chris here and today I'm getting ready to go start working on Castle Grayskull. The last couple of videos that we put out is a little bit about what we're doing to get ready for fiberglassing and some of the things we're trying for the first time so we thought might as well take you guys along with us so we can experience it together. <laughs> so let's get going. So I'm doing this lower part of the window and it's supposed to be like a timber and I kind of carved some wood grain in it kind of figuring that I'm going to lose a little bit of that detail by the time I get all the fiberglass and stuff on. So the sticky back foil would definitely be a lot better on here. I just wanted to show you guys though kind of how you can still make it work using this wallpaper glue or Elmer's glue method. When I put my piece of foil on here you can you just kind of get it as much in that detail as you can by hand. You kind of got to be careful not to bust through the foil. And just work your way down. I've got just another chip brush that you can smooth on like that. Now this one's a little bit more of a stiffer bristle brush and that's kind of nice for really getting in there and again I'm not expecting to save all this detail but it's gonna it's gonna look good once there's paint and everything on here so on this particular sculpture I don't care that's why I decided to try this foil out on this one I don't know if I would do this foil like on a smaller sculpture I'd probably just use like a resin or something a lot of you have suggested the aqua resin that's definitely a cool way to do it. I couldn't afford that on this project. So at first I had concern about some of those edges that are peeling up. But the more and more I'm doing this, I'm finding out that as you apply another layer over another layer, it really holds a lot of that down. Overlapping just a little bit. And again, I'm always holding one section as I'm bending into the next section. That seems to be helping me anyway. I don't know why this is reminding me of ding-dongs and ho-hos. And again, I think I am losing a little bit of detail, but it's it's no detail that like the fiberglass wouldn't have really covered up anyway. And I am finding out too that the more sanded the edge is, the better the foil sticks to it. Whereas like this edge on this side, I didn't sand at all and it really wasn't sticking very well. So some of these cracks too, I'm using the handle and kind of going back and giving myself a nice crease again. This foil method, I think is really designed in a way where it's nice if you're going to remove the foam sculpture out from the hard coating. If you're cheap like me or if you have no money, like me <laughs> this is a good this is a good method for doing it <laughs> again i only worry about getting one seam at a time there we go the less water down this glue is the better it works too by the way i tried to chintz out on that as well didn't work so well <laughs> Gina's like, maybe you're putting too much water. I'm like, I know I am, but I was trying to save money. If you buy like a big old five gallon bucket of wallpaper glue, like from a paint store, it's like 145 bucks for the bucket. I ain't gonna buy that. Probably last the person forever if they did do that. I think using the resin would be a heck of a lot faster, but I just, I didn't want to spend the money. The other thing too is I actually have quite a bit of resin left over from doing the pumpkins, so I wanted to try to use that up. I have a whole bucket of gel coat as well that I'm gonna use, but if I was ever gonna do something like this again, I would definitely do maybe the resin idea. Just, I always like, I like to try different things, so. I don't know if I would do this method again or not. I'll let you know after I'm finished. <laughs> Any of these little spots like this where there's a couple little exposed pieces of foam, all I'm doing is taking a small piece 
and then spraying some spray 77 on there and then applying it on there is working really well. It just sticks a little bit nicer than the wallpaper glue, that's why I'm doing it. I've got this thing laid down and I'm getting ready to start fiberglassing and I'm noticing there's a few areas where the foil overlapping the other foil kind of lifted up a little bit. I'm not too worried about it because that was doing that when I did that fiberglassing and it worked out just fine. The glue, it sticks pretty good to the foam, but the wallpaper glue on the foil to glue foil, it, it, it tends to lift up like this. So someone suggested using some Elmer's glue. We could try that. Also, too, I was using Spray 77 um, and that worked as well. I do have this sticky back foil tape for like air ducts and stuff. It's a little bit thicker, but what's nice is you can tear it like that. So see these little places that I missed, I can go back with this. That works too. I just wanted to show you guys. And this is the same thing I was doing with the Spray 77 and the normal tin foil. This sticky back foil tape is obviously more expensive than the normal foil, so it wouldn't be worth buying that to cover this whole thing but if you had like a small project or something you could do that now because i have this laminating resin i also want to go ahead and try this because i think it's going to be faster it is a little bit more expensive way like i said but it if it ends up being faster it's worth it i've got this backside all lightly sanded and ready to go my plan is to paint this whole backside and then paint the front side here of this tower for this smooth on epoxy it's a one to three ratio. And then I'm gonna put my little coloring in here. I don't know if this coloring is gonna work in here or not, we'll see. Again, I'm just putting the coloring in it so I can see where I'm brushing. This stuff is pretty old, uh, like a year or so old. And when I first bought it, it's the I got the slow stuff because I wasn't confident. Now I wish I had the faster stuff, but the pot life for this is about 55 minutes. I should just have to do one coat of this see how it works all right so here's what we're looking at i was able to stretch that eight ounces of epoxamide all the way up to this point right there so i'm going to tell you guys right now that is way faster i did that like in 15 minutes if i would have been foiling i would have been down here still trying to get all the wrinkles and everything out so it just depends if i had a bunch of people helping me the foil would be fine but when you're by yourself if you can afford to spring for the epoxy resin this is the way to go we still need to see how the polyester resin does on this before i can be real sure but i'm gonna go ahead and move forward and keep doing this because this is so much faster i'll tell you guys one huge awesome difference between this and fiberglass polyester resin is it has zero odor so that's always nice <laughs> The negative is this is like painting honey so it's got like a thick feel to it kind of makes your hand feel pretty fatigued so you can't be a wimp when you're doing this oh my fingers hurt oh well, now your back's gonna hurt because you just pulled landscaping duty so I got the whole inside of this tower all covered the other thing is I did have some leftover, so I painted the rest of the top of that tower and then down there. And to do the backs of both of these towers and then the little bit of that front, I used about 32 ounces of this epoxy resin. So just to kind of give you guys a little idea, the thing is, is it's much easier, much faster, but it is a little more expensive than doing the foil. So I guess you be the judge just depends on what your situation is all right you guys so here is my little fiberglass chop strand mat here i've got two different kinds i've got a 1.5 ounce and then i've got a three ounce you can see i keep my fiber mat really clean <laughs> so for me i use the 1.5 the most and i'll even go through sometimes and tear this uh, thicker one in half just because it's easier for me to wet and get in all of the detail. Speaking of that, a lot of the guys that are like professionals and do this all the time, they 
like to wet the surface and then they'll put like a real big piece down and work it all in all the the details and stuff so for me what i do and a lot of people have spoke against this but i'll take a piece put it down on this little piece of plexi here and i'll wet it out and then bring them over and you know you sometimes i'll wet the surface first and try that but definitely working with smaller pieces helps me get in all the details but i'll work my way all across and get the whole thing with that first layer then i'll put a color in the resin and do my second layer so i know where i'm at i don't ever overlap them more than like this much so it's not like it's getting a crazy amount of overlap it's easier for me to work with little pieces so i like that takes a little bit longer but now as far as mixing goes i only usually mix um about five or six ounces at a time because it's hot in the tent i start getting stressed out if i mix more than like six or seven ounces so i usually stick to that plus i get so many distractions with harrison and everything so it's nice for me to just have that amount of resin as far as the brushes are concerned i usually use like a two inch chip brush i like the ones that have a little bit more of a a stiff bristle some of them have like a softer bristle i don't like those so i always stick with the the ones that are stiffer in fact i'll even go through and cut like a third off just so it's a little more better of a tamping now for gloves a lot, a lot of times what i'll do i don't have any of these right now but i got the blue or the heavy duty black um <laughs> everything's covered in dirt um but I'll, I'll i'll usually wear a pair of rubber gloves and then gina got me these food handler gloves and i put these on over the rubber gloves and what's nice about that is these are constantly getting all fiberglass stuff and stuff and i can constantly cycle through these go through a bunch of them and and save these as much as possible here's the catalyst or the hardener that i'm using for the polyester resin and because I'm only mixing five ounces, I don't need very much. I've got this little tiny measuring cup and I barely even put a little bit in there. There's like little charts online that you can get to figure out your mixture. I have about six ounces of the polyester resin in the cup. We get our little three cc's of our hardener. And then when you start mixing this up, you'll notice it starts to kind of turn like a brownish. It does help to wet it on this for me than on the sculpture, especially because I'm always scared that this stuff's gonna like melt the foam and stuff, so. But a lot of times what I'll do is like, I'll take another piece and, and start tamping this piece out and then whatever resin goes through this one will wet the one on the bottom. So this also, the reason why I like doing this too is it helps me stretch out my resin. I always feel like I'm putting too much resin on if I put the resin on the sculpture. It's probably the right way to do it, but I'm trying to chintz out. I was telling them that this stuff is so much more stinkier than the odorless epoxy. Right? But it's not that bad. No, I've I mean, smelled I should, worse. I, I be, think Bondo smells worse than this does. Yeah, I should be wearing a mask. With, so come on over here. Most guys, they'll wet this out and then put a dry cloth in there. But I'll just put this down. And um, you can start tamping it in all the details. Now, as this resin sits in this stuff, it'll actually make this cloth a lot, uh, a lot softer and easier to work. Well, so I'll let that sit for a second try to avoid air bubbles yeah well, again what I'll do is I'll take another piece put it down so that all this tamping at least goes into another one instead of it all going on the plexiglass but and again you guys this I you have to work fast in here because this tent is a lot hotter than like being in the shade so all this stuff I have a, a shorter pot, pot life, life. I normally fiberglass naked <laughs> since I'm on camera. I got dressed. Yeah, right. <laughs> no one wants to see that. <laughs> and then because I am doing these little pieces, 
I do overlap it just a little bit. Just a hair? Just <laughs> a hair. And um, I try to tamp out the biggest surface and then and then holding it down, work it into the seams. Fun stuff. Now I've done this with the epoxies, but I'll tell you one thing, it's harder to do this with epoxies that don't like melt the fibers and stuff. This polyester resin is definitely easier to use than the and other you can, stuff. You can already see where there's an air bubble right there. Right here? Mm-hmm, yep. You can work it out. Yeah, work it out. But it takes, you can come back and do it though. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm just letting them know. Jeez. No, I want to make sure that it's good. It's better to get all my pieces, wet it out and on there and get it out of this cup though. And then, cause, cause this isn't going to get hard really fast. So I have time to tamp that stuff. You know what I mean? I'm more scared about that, this resin going setting off before are you excited you're finally fiberglassing yeah i'm excited because i want to get this done man. a month, a month take, later <laughs> yeah taking too long so like i said i'll just kind of put that like that i said what i do is just hold holding the one side i can get that kind of smashed into place Give a real good close up. If you're having a hard time tamping some of that down, you can put a little more resin in the crack. I try not to do too much of that though, but every once in a while you get a stu stubborn air bubble. Yeah. You know, and that just helps. Now you can see like the size of the pieces that I'm using are about as big as I'm comfortable doing because. Like I said, I, I've seen people do bigger ones, but for me, it, it makes me stressed out. I think the reason why is because most of the stuff that we fiberglass is... Bumpy. Yeah, it has, <laughs> it has different curvature to it. Whereas if you were doing one straight section... Like a surfboard? Or like a boat or something, yeah. you know? But there are certain... If you're good. <laughs> certain spots, but yes. So now I'll just go through here. I still do have a little bit of resin left, but but honestly, it's just working from the center out, get all your air bubbles out as much as possible. Just keep working it. Yeah. Fun stuff. Did that air bubble go away right here? Yeah, it did. Yeah, yeah the, <laughs> like I said, the longer that this stuff sits, mm -hmm. it actually um, works really nice. It eats, eats the... But like you can see, the the resin's starting to thicken up. Mm -hmm. So I need to run. For I need to run. stop making videos and work. <laughs> so this is where the gloves come in handy. As you can kind of, as you're working some of these air bubbles out, you can hold it down on the one side and then work it. Work it. Otherwise, it kind of. You know, what's neat too is this material actually kind of does stretch and thin out. I just try to get this as nice as I can now before I mix my next cup. That way I'm not getting too far behind. If you end up having a little bit of fuzz, like fuzzy glass left over and stuff, it's not a huge deal because you can always sand that. But again, you can also tamp it down. This stuff gets a little more sticky over time. There's a good air bubble. Like when I get this kind of situation, a little more resin will be nice. If you wet that down, it'll fill it in there. Were you squishing it too hard? Yeah. Just left over. It's actually supposed to go up. Go up, yeah. So you can, you can fix it. <laughs> Thank you.
that's a big piece you got there, friend. What happened to your small little wrist? <laughs> this, this is actually going to be on the bottom. But oh. for now, because I'm still wetting out some of my smaller pieces, I figure I might as well start getting it wetted out. Okay. You know, through the small pieces. Okay, and because it's a straight section, you figure you can yeah. handle handle the bigness of yeah. the... Yeah. <laughs> I can do big sections right here. Nice. All along here and on the bottom. Cool. Plus, this is that thicker um, three ounce piece, so it takes a little bit more resin to soak through. So what, are you just gonna dump a cup on there? Yeah, well, <laughs> for this one, I'll, I'll wet out the, the bottom. Okay. And that way it sticks on there. Get it nice and juicy. Yeah, but this <laughs> way, at least I'm not wasting resin just on that plexiglass. You oh, know? that's a great idea. I'm sure I have a couple air bubbles or two. What's nice though, you guys, about this sculpture though, is any of the the rocks that kind of get smoothed over it's gonna really help give it that toy look you know like the play set How you mean are... it's not perfect well no no like you know how on the play sets they're like really smooth and roundy so there's no sharp edges <laughs> this is gonna have very rounded over corners because there might be a couple air bubbles in there Oh, I see. <laughs> it is a big piece. <laughs> Didn't fit it perfectly because I kind of tore it by hand. But... Mm -hmm. Oh, you know what? Jeez. No, I had it. <laughs> Your glove's sticking. <laughs> there you go. Is that how it goes? <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> Shoot, I wanted to look cool. Well, I think it's the operator. You're just gonna go for it? Yes, so. All right. Well, <laughs> I don't think I tore it right. Apparently, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Blooper reel. It's a big piece. This is why you do small pieces, I see yeah. now. <laughs> uh, hey now. You know what? It's not, you know, it's not the most gracious thing I've ever done, but <laughs> the most gracious, graceful. <laughs> I think the fumes really are getting to your head. <laughs> oh boy. I'm not so sure I want to show that now. Remember when you were on Handyman and you said that you'd rather have it unnecessarily overdone than <laughs> unnecessarily. unnecessarily underdone? Uh, I was nervous. There was a lot going on. Well, I was Cameras just going to say <laughs> there's a lot of glass to be uh, resined right here. Yeah, so it's gonna be see, strong though. Yeah, I guess I didn't have to go so big. I could have done <laughs> half that and still felt cool. But now I feel really lame. Did you measure twice, cut once? No, I just tore it by hand and eyeballs. <laughs> you eyeballed it. Yeah. Well, there you go. Oh. Well, it was nice to try. I had never done a, a big piece like this. And I still think it's good to, you know, on these big areas to do big pieces. I could probably do half this next time. Is it stronger when you do it uh, as well, one piece? Well, yeah, it's stronger and you're not overlapping and using up extra resin and stuff. The good news is, is look at this, you guys. Man, that's beautiful. So you just gonna go over a couple little spots, you think? Probably should do two layers down at the bottom. Yeah. Like where he's gonna stand on it. Uh-huh. But I'm thinking that um, That's good. up at the rocks and stuff, probably don't need to be too much thicker. Yeah. 
just almost a half a bucket and I've only gotten what one tower done basically <laughs> but that that means I should get two towers done in one bucket right yeah let's hope wonder how much the skull will take whoa 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 it's my handy dandy pouring method here Pretty brave doing it like that. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about the helicopter, you guys. For some reason, it's just been outside all day. <laughs> Did you pay the gas bill? Oh, shoot. <laughs> Chasing Gina. We haven't put the tags on our truck yet. They're after us. <laughs> we did something wrong, I'm sure. <laughs> They're all... I can smell that resin all the way from here. Yeah, someones they're looking for a chemical leak somewhere. You look like you've been out here smelling fumes all day. <laughs> <laughs> you do. You look happy. My gloves are getting very sticky. You want some fresh ones? Um, no, that's fine. Oh, you're hardcore, huh? So I started <laughs> I started glassing the uh, tower that has the epoxy hard coating instead of the foil and it works fine um, the only thing I would say is when I touch it it has kind of like a rougher texture so but I when I put the glass on there it didn't matter in fact it's, I actually kind of think it's cool because not only was it faster for me to do it uh, than foiling but it also it's it's hard so yeah it's almost like just another layer of hardness instead of doing the foil which mm -hmm. is like soft and stuff so right i'm gonna lean more towards spending the extra money especially if you're by yourself like mm -hmm. if you had a whole crew of people oh yeah foiling would be no big deal man just doing it all over again huh i feel like i'll never be done you'll be done gina's been taking really good care of me making me lunches and spoiling me <laughs> well that's because i'm gonna I'm gonna beg you to do something for me in the next project. <laughs> Quit spoiling our son and spoil me. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Man, I don't know what's going on today. A helicopter's been going <laughs> and now like sirens off and on. I think they're practicing something, yeah. but it's just like, man. Have you ever worked with anything so sticky? What's something really sticky that sticks to all your fingers and stuff that you've worked with? Candy. Candy? Mm-hmm. Remember cranberry sweets? Yeah. <laughs> if anybody knows what I'm talking about, up in Oregon. Cranberry Comment sweets. Comment below. I love that place because they have like freebie bowls of all the mm, like chocolate, uh, little um, samples. Jellies. I mean, that place is crazier than like Costco. There's like Jeez, a sample fudge. bowl every four feet. <laughs> and you're just like, yum, 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 yum. Harrison went nuts when he was in there. Yes. What kind of candy were you making? I primarily made jelly candy. So they had um, wine, candy, fruit, all the berries that you find in Oregon, blackberries, raspberries. That's cool. And then, of course, I made some other stuff like the fillings for some of the like chocolates and stuff. That was another thing I made. Best job I ever had. I've had a lot of jobs, but that was the funnest job I ever had. Stress-free. Well, I guess I shouldn't say stress-free. I was in charge of three huge kettles and you have to offset them. And then when one would get going, you start the next one and then you start the third one, but then the first one would be ending and you just rotate all day long. But compared to some other jobs, that was low stress. Did you get free candy on top of your paycheck? <laughs> yeah, so every paycheck we get like a pound of candy or a half a pound of candy, whatever we chose. So you could do like a quarter of this, a quarter of that. But it had to be candy that we made there. It couldn't be like the shipped and stuff like Jelly Bellies or oh, Gumballs or you. something like that. So. Man, they had some. What, what the, they have some Rocky Road chocolate. Yeah, Rocky Road fudge. Oh. Cheese fudge. So good. Very, very good. My favorite was the chocolate covered almonds, almond clusters. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I love anything chocolate, nuts, and caramel. Oh my goodness. Now you're really talking. 
So it's the next morning, and this is still a little bit tacky and soft. What Gina and I will do is we'll carry it out and we'll put it in the sun, sit all day long, and then we'll let two or three days go by before I do any light sanding on it. Uh, I still may put another layer of fiberglass on. N normally I'd like to do about four to six ounces. Since the foam is behind there, I think it's gonna be good. So once that cures, we'll apply some gel coat to it and then it'll be time for paint. You guys know what I'll be doing for the next few days, so I'll just put out some progress videos of how I'm doing. But thank you so much for tagging along with me on my work day, and we'll see you guys next time.